why would an Indian doctor from Bangalore, which probably has the best weather in the entire world, decide to move to foggy London instead of sunny California? Why would a promising young doctor decide to settle for mediocre NHS salaries instead of going for the big bucks in the US? If you're curious about these things, I'd like to think that you found the right video. Hey the lovely person watching YouTube. If you're new here, hi, my name is Sajay. I'm a doctor working in Cambridge now. I've moved from London to Cambridge a couple of weeks ago. That's something to discuss in another video. But in this video, we're gonna be diving deep into my journey as an international medical graduate and what made me decide to move to the UK instead of the US. But first, sip of tea, because we're talking about the UK after all. Alright, a bit of a story time. Let's do a quick rewind. I'm a proud graduate of Bangalore Medical College in India. Those days were a roller coaster. Think late night study sessions, endless cups of chai and a lot of cricket in the evenings. But after all that fun, the real world beckoned. After my internship and graduation, I worked for Marrow, which is an amazing company, and a couple of hospitals after that. Then I reached a point where I had to sort of decide what to do next. I always knew that I wasn't gonna work as an MBBS graduate. I always wanted to train further. And if you're wondering why I didn't stay back in India, I've spilled the tea on that in another video. I think it should be here or here. I think it's here. Most Indian doctors move either to the US or to the UK if they decide to move abroad for their further training. So there I was at the crossroads. Should I go to the US? or to the UK. I packed my bags for the Queen's land. Well, it's now King's land, but here are the reasons why. You know that feeling when you're in a candy store and you just want to taste everything? That was sort of me with medical specialties. I liked both medical and surgical specialties and I just wasn't ready to tie a knot with one specific specialty. Now the US, while charming, it is like that strict parent that says, you only have these many options to choose from just so pick one of these. That didn't suit me at all. I wanted to work for a bit in few different specialties and see what I actually really liked. Even though I had worked in most specialties during my internship, as an in turn, your responsibilities and the things you can do is quite limited, so it's quite difficult to assess whether you really like that specialty. A great thing about the UK is that as junior doctors, we can work in any specialty that we want. So yeah, I went exploring. I specifically wanted to work in surgery and see if I liked it enough to get into training. So I did eight to nine months of colorectal and general surgery. And I also did nine months of emergency medicine because these are like two things that I sort of really liked during my internship and I wanted to see if I liked it enough to get into training, especially considering these specialties can be quite busy and quite hectic and the work-life balance doesn't really exist. And when it does, it's not as great as with other specialties. So being able to try out all these different specialties for a few months or up to a year before you commit many years of your life into training in that specialty was kind of like dating before marrying and I kind of liked it. In the US, however, you can't really do something like this. You have to early on decide what specialty you want. You have to apply for the specialty, do the interviews, match into the specialty, match into residency, start the residency and only while you're working as a resident, you like actually get to assess whether you like it or not. And a lot of the times it'll be like too late to back out. As an IMG, especially as an IMG, if you want to like quit your residency and then apply for some other residency, it's gonna be like extremely difficult, sometimes even impossible to get into specialties, especially if the specialty that you want to get into is competitive. Again, there might be a way to do this, you know, work for a bit in different specialties, but I am not aware of something like that and I'm pretty much sure that it's not an easy thing to do. Also, what specialties I could get in into in the US as an international medical graduate was super restrictive. You could get into internal medicine, you could get into pediatrics, you can get into probably psychiatry, but that's pretty much it. If I want to do like orthopedics or radiology or dermatology, tough luck. It's almost impossible for an IMG to get in. I mean, there are 
you know people who have done it but that takes like years of research work or other things to be able to get in there and they want to do all that funnily the uk used to be even more restrictive till 2019 there was a set of rules called rlmt but basically what it meant is that a lot of non eu and non uk doctors couldn't get into most good training programs but thankfully since brexit this scheme has been scrapped so right now imgs are at the same level as uk grads and european grads so pretty much every specialty has opened up to imgs and if you really want to get something you can get it like even compared to india the uk is a more accessible system right now in india if i wanted to do like neurosurgery or dermatology or radiology unless i get a really good rank in the neat pg exam the chances of me getting in to one of these residencies especially in like good hospitals is very difficult it's almost impossible i mean if i don't have a really good score there's no way i'm getting into one of these but in the uk as long as you are really passionate about the specialty if you can work towards building your portfolio and showing that you you know you are really passionate about this and you probably need to do a few you know research papers and things like that which is you know doable it's well supported here in the uk as long as you can do that you can get into pretty much any specialty you want that was a very big factor for me money is not everything but it is something and is the tea the uk doesn't really pay great salaries for the doctors but if you compare to the us resident salaries we come out shining smiling a bit brighter plus there are plenty of locum shifts available which pay much more than regular shifts when you need some money or when you want to do that spontaneous trip to portugal now pay as a residence in the uk is slightly better compared to the US residents and that's mainly because the US residents work much longer hours per week than UK residents do there's a doctor mike video on the internet somewhere where he says residents in the US work for effectively less than minimum wage considering like the number of hours they work and the salary which is fixed in the UK things are a bit more sensible so here the number of hours you work is sort of fixed around 40 hours per week and if for whatever reason you have to work more than that you will get paid for the extra hours you do because here you are paid based on the number of hours you work rather than you know one flat pay for your entire year so if you work extra hours for whatever reason you'll get paid for that you can do extra locum shifts which are paid at a different much higher rate than regular shifts you can do this because you are only working 40 hours a week so you'll have the time to do these extra shifts if that's what you want instead of spending your time traveling or doing something fun and also here in the uk we are paying for full pay restoration so when that happens you're going to feel like you're earning the right amount of money for your efforts so waiting for that to happen but if you look at the us side at the end of the day as an attending as a consultant in the us you make two to three times the salary that you make as an nhs consultant that is probably the reason why residents in the us are okay with getting a lower salary because you can see the light at the end of the tunnel it's a very long tunnel but you can still see the light and you know you'll be there one day so people just do it and get on with it now don't get me wrong every doctor's journey is tough no matter where they are anywhere in the world but the usmle felt like climbing the everest compared to that the plab was more like a challenging trek it was challenging but you know you could do it and it was also quite rewarding the usmle is essentially the medical school board exams for medical students in the us so if you're writing the usmle you're basically sitting all the board exams that medical students sit in the us so it's like doing med school twice the uk plab however is a test designed to test your knowledge to make sure that you are someone who has graduated from med school because you are someone who would have graduated from medical school and it's at the right level for you it's not a very difficult exam to pass but 
it's doable. However, from the next year, from 2024, the PLAB will be replaced by an exam called the UK MLA. Now this is sort of like an exit exam that every UK medical graduate needs to sit and also any international medical graduate who wants to work in the UK will have to sit this exam. So if you're watching this video and you're considering moving to the UK, there's a very good chance that you'll have to sit the UK MLA. But don't worry about it because along with a couple of friends, I'm working on a project that will help you sail through PLAB and the UK MLA with ease. I don't want to talk too much about it right now because we are still developing it but in a few weeks time I'll talk to you about it so if you are someone who's considering doing the PLAB or the UK MLA stay tuned I really think it will help you. Who likes to be put in a box? Not me. So like I said I worked in different specialties like I did surgery, I did emergency medicine. The thing in the UK is like you can easily switch from one specialty to another. It's like being in a medical place playground and after exploring emergency medicine and surgery I applied to and got into training in general practice or family medicine as it's called in the US and in India. The thing about general practice is that I can also do some emergency medicine, I can also do minor surgeries, I can also become a sports medicine consultant. It's super flexible and the system here in the UK is that as long as you train in something, you can do it. So it's kind of super flexible. I love that. All right, confession time. I've got a bit of the wanderlust bug and UK is like the perfect place for me. Super quick and super cheap flights to Europe. And even in the UK, traveling is amazing. It's so beautiful, like the rolling hills, beautiful countryside, endless cup of tea. Honestly, traveling to Europe is so cheap and so easy. Like my flight ticket to Dublin was cheaper than the train from London Liverpool Street to Stansted which is like a 50 minute one hour journey. Also London has like six major airports like six huge airports in one city. That's how well connected London is. And also London is the capital of the world. So you really feel like you're at the center of everything. Anything you can get at any other place in the world, you can get it here. Like, I mean, I even get my Kota's coffee here. So it does feel like a place where you can have it all if you can afford it. And there you have it. My love letter to the UK and the reasons behind my big move. But look, I am someone who doesn't like to be restricted to one place or one sort of thing. I am still at a point in life where I'm exploring different things, especially with my career. And it might so happen that I might decide to, you know, go to the US someday and, you know, do residency there or work there in some way. So I hope you don't take this video as me telling you why you should choose the UK. This was just a video about what made me choose the UK, what made me come to the UK. And if you choose to come to the UK, stay tuned for more adventures. If you have any questions or if you have a story to share, feel free to do that in the comments. Share, like and subscribe. That always helps. But more than that, make sure you have a lovely week and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.